It's your boy Moxburg Slim coming live from Charlotte, North Carolina. Hey, this is Coach B.D. Waddell, West Mac High School. I'm Doug Rashid. I'm a Grammy-nominated record producer. Hey, I'm LaCoya McClain. I used to be known as MA1570847. Hey, my name is Lydia. I'm a social injustice activist. Hey, it's Danielle E. Brown, songwriter and artist, and we're rocking with Grand Dossier TV. What's going on, y'all? It's your girl, Ro Wilson, singer songwriter straight out of Gaston in North Carolina, and you are rocking with Grand Dossier TV. Another great show on Grand Dossier TV, where I'm here with my girl, Bro Wilson, the talented, beautiful R&B singer in these streets. But before we get started with this interview, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit the like, make sure you hit the notification bell so when we go live, you get all the up-to-date videos that we have for you. With that being said, Bro, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy to be here. I feel good. It's the new year. We starting a new year off on good terms, so I feel good. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. When uh, I talked with your your manager on uh, Facebook or whatever, and got the information, got to go ahead to interview you. I was like, "Who is Ro?" Because he put no last name. I was like, "Who is this?" And yeah. then I saw it was you. I said, "Oh, that's the homie! I know who this is." Hey, yeah, we've been. But for those who don't know, like we've been rocking for a long time, even before I decided I really wanted to like be an artist or anything like that. So yeah, we go, we go back. Go back. We go back. We so go back. I was like, yo. She definitely got to be on the show. I've been trying to get her for a while anyways. So what's been going on with music? Uh, what got you into this thing? What made you say you want to sing? I read your bio. I did not know you were from New York. Yes. So what kind of influence did that have on you? A lot. So I tell people all the time that I'm um, I'm, I'm BX bred and NC fed. Mm -hmm. Right? That's like my, like that's like my thing, right? <laughs> like I'm BX bred and NC fed because growing up in New York, like it made me tough. It mm -hmm. made me really who I am but coming here to the south it just added on to that yeah. so that that's that's who Ro is New York New York is me so I want to do a lot of crazy stuff sometimes that's <laughs> that's the New York side yes. right but when I be chill and I'm like you know what that's that's the that's the NC the southern hospitality the, gotcha. yeah gotcha. so coming from New York you have to have a lot of influences in the game of music. That's the mecca of music anyways. So who influenced your career and what you're doing right now? New York wise? Mm -hmm. Or does anybody? Honestly, you know, growing up who I, Aaliyah did it for me. Okay. Between Aaliyah, Lauren Hill, and believe it or not, like the Shaka Khans, the okay. Yeah, like that's what did it for me. Like when as a kid. I used to sit and listen to the radio, mm -hmm. and I tell this story all the time. I know people are like, damn, she's saying it again. <laughs> but <laughs> as a kid, I used to listen to the radio for real, and like, literally with my ear mm -hmm. on the speaker. We had we had boom boxes, like, yeah, we had, you know what I'm saying? We had all these cute little iPhones, iPads. <laughs> we had it, and I would really think that it was real people inside the radio. Literally, little people in there. <laughs> Singing and dancing, and I'm like, yo, like I want to be one of the little people in the box, like. Like a little balloon. The all right. So you saw the movies, yeah. and that and did it for me. I'm like, it's real. Gotcha. I knew it was little people. <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what it was. That's what did it. So, let's move on to some of your uh, some of your your music videos, some of the inspirations that you have behind them. Uh, I did not know you did this song called Stay Away. So last night, I, I said, I got to get prepared for her to come in. I listened to Stay Away from Charlotte to Gaston. You gas on your back to Charlotte. I'm just listening to it. And I'm watching the video. I said, first of all, you did a great job acting. Thank you. You did a great job. And I, and I missed the part with this whole knife at the very end. So explain Stay Away. What was going on in this video? Explain what, what gave you the inspiration to make this song. So no, stay away. It, it comes from a real place. Like I was in a toxic situation. Mm -hmm. I call it a situationship. Gotcha. And it was one of those things where it's like, you know, it's not good for you. You know, you don't need to be with this person, but yet you just keep going back. Mm -hmm. 
And every time you go back, you just gonna keep going through the same. Can I curse on you? Yeah, you gonna be going through the same shit every time. <laughs> so, so it, I mean, it's a real. It came from a real place. Gotcha. And when I really got to the point to where I could separate myself from that person and actually be Ro and do what Ro wanted to do, mm-hmm. a lot of times the, the best way to, to get it off of you is to write it down. True. Right? So just one day after all of it, I just had everything on my mind. I heard a beat and then I'm like, yeah. How long did the situation still last? A year. Okay, you said it too long. Yeah, it couldn't last longer than that because I would, I wouldn't. <laughs> the, the Gaston Gazette would have me up in there. <laughs> now, what you have, in, what you have in management? Did they say anything to you about this whole situation still to get you out of it, or are you just kind of? No, it was over before all that. Okay, okay. Yeah, it That's was over. Thing. It was over before before you know. I had to take some time to to wind down and get back to being me, but yeah, it was it was over before that. So yeah. thank God, because I don't want Jeff to have to. Somebody. You know what I'm saying? They they tough. Y'all don't see security in the back back here, but yeah, he's Jeff. big and he's scary. Y'all better watch out. Jeff's a big dude. Yeah. <laughs> big dude. I gotta be careful with Jeff over there. Yeah. So now the song that really did it for me for you that I like. Oh, I didn't know Ro was singing. Like, uh-huh. like I know her, but when you came out and you used the uh, I forget the group that made that did the hook, but you. Remix it or whatever to your own with Cause of You. Uh-huh. I love that song. I love it. Whoever it's, it's, right yeah. there, I love just, it. Shout out Just K. Okay. Shout out Just K. Yeah. So Just K, he actually wrote the song. Okay. And he needed, he, he hit me. He's like, yo, I got this song. I need a female to like, to, you know, put her twist on it and just do your thing and see what happens. And we recorded it. And honestly, it, it it shot off bigger than what I thought it would. Like when because of you came out, it really grabbed a lot of attention, it did. and it put me in front of people and in different places to where I can do what I want to do and could be more free and open with the music and stuff now. So yeah, because of you was big. Because I know you was going everywhere. You was on Facebook all the time, yeah. saying, "Listen, tune in." One on one point nine was going crazy with your yeah, song. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I, I tried to at one time dibble and dabble with artists or whatever, but I never got a chance to get the music on the radio. Not well on, on some bootleg radios, yes, but <laughs> never on like, like radio, the big, radio, big, big radio, radio. Yeah. So when you driving in your car and your song come on, what was your first reaction? How did that make you feel? Man, I was freaking out. So I was working at the hospital in Charlotte. I was working at um, Presbyterian. Okay. Right. Me and my sister, nurses. Mm-hmm. That's what I did. Okay. And we just driving home. We just driving home, and I hear the beat like, and I'm not paying no attention to it. I'm like just scrolling on my phone. I was like, I was like, you plugged your phone up to the to auxiliary. She was like, no, that's not you. I was like, that's not your phone on the aux. And then I is like the truth. Like a car, we we were on Brookshire Boulevard, in Charlotte. A car ride past us, and they blasting it. And that's when I looked, I'm like, oh, shit, my song is on the radio. <laughs> like, it wasn't even the fact that it was playing in my car. It was that somebody rode past me and they like, they bopping. And I'm like, right. like, I just went crazy. Like, I for the first, I don't know how many times they played it on the radio, but I never, even still to this day, like, if I hear myself on the radio, I'm still not used to it. It's still that moment that's like. Yo, I'm on the radio. <laughs> like, <laughs> so yeah, I, it's it's it's. I can't explain it. I don't know. <laughs> so what did that do for your confidence? How did that make you a better artist? How did that build you up? Because I know for me, if I listen to, listen, let my show on YouTube go past <laughs> a million views and people, I see people come out of food. I saying, Grand Dossier TV, what's up? So I can only imagine being an artist, something that you've been working for. You on the radio, people knowing who you are. Like, how did that build that confidence? Because I'd have been. Arrogant. It made but, me oh. feel good. But you know what, though? I'm so, like, humble. Like, I'm not really one of those ones to, like, run around and brag. Like, yeah, I got, I'm doing it like this, and I got the most views, and I, I'm not, it's not even a little bit. Not even, I don't know. That's just my personality, though. Like, I'm so humble with it that it's just, like, I get excited, I brag, and I boast to myself. I pop my shit sometimes, of course, but it's just, 
confidence wise, it put me in a spot to say, okay, Ro, well, if you did this, what can you do next? Right? Because I had like a list of things that I always wanted to do. Right? And honestly, I've knocked that list out. I, I always said I wanted to sing with a live band. I always said like, I wanted to do a competition. I always said like, man, I wish I would love to hear myself on the radio one day. I've done those things. So once I hit the radio, it was like, well, damn, bro, like, what can you do next? Like, what other place can, maybe we can see you on TV. You know, maybe we can see you on somebody's movie or somebody reality show or, like, it's always bigger. It's always bigger. Like, once I hit a certain milestone, it's always, all right, like, what can I do next? Where can I go? Who can, who can I go see? Who, who can I let hear me? Who can I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I always want to put myself somewhere to where I could be in a higher, better position. So that's, like, the main goal. Well, since you said the word next, what is next for Ro? Then we're going to talk about this last video. Everything. Tell me, what is next, though? Everything that comes my way, I want to be a part of it. Gotcha. Everything. Acting, whether it's yeah. acting, singing, comedy, whatever. I, I want to do it. Anything that's going to build the brand. I want to do it. Anything that's going to build the brand, yeah. Gotcha. Now, this last video. <laughs> now, this last video, we, we started off with... Um, Stay away. Well, uh -huh. we started off with really, uh, for me anyways, because of you. Uh -huh. Then, you know, okay, a little party vibe, got you. Uh -huh. Then Stay Away came. They're like, okay, we're a little serious here. Yeah. <laughs> so then, even, even uh, Leave Me Alone, even uh, Bet They Wish. I like that song, too. I like the video of that. Thank you, thank you. But then we get down to They Like Me. Oh, what what? <laughs> yeah. what what was that about? You gotta explain where so did that come wanted, from? The, all right, so with with they like me, it actually just became itself in the studio. Like it wasn't one of those things like we sat and wrote. Like we literally, me and Michi got together. Shout out Michi Don. We got together. Shout out this K again, and we was like, you know what? Like Michi, I want to do a song. Mm -hmm. Like what's up? Because I love Michi. Michi is. I don't know if you y'all know who Michi is out there. Michi, shout out. She's rapper and guest on you. But we sat down, we heard the beat. Michi literally wrote her verse in like two minutes, right? right. So she started popping her shit, and I'm like, well, damn. I got to say something to, to come along with what you said. Like, you know what I'm saying? So gotcha. that came along that way. But with me, it's like I want to have different types of music for different type of fields, different type of crowds, right? You got your people go through their love and they break up songs and they, you know, get that vibe. But people want to party. People want to have fun. People want to, you know what I'm saying? So they like me. It, it's a lot of truth to it because they, they do like me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I got you. But that, that's, that's just what that is. It was a fun, it was just a fun time. Gotcha. Yeah. So doing all this great stuff, making music. You know, the people want to know what is what is your creative process like? What do you go through? You know, we all know like the, the likes of Jay Z. He go in the corner and start whispering to himself, and something amazing comes out. What do Ro Wilson do? Um, so you know what, Rick, Rick. All right, shout out my management team, right? Because they stay on me. Got you. Got you. <laughs> so yeah, so they they push me more than anything because. I, I sometimes I take my time with things, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'll get a beat and I'll sit on it and I'll write and be like, you know what? I don't like it. I'm going to rewrite it. I'll, I'll get a beat and rewrite the song three or four times and be like, it's not right. But I'll literally get to the studio with Rick and Jeff and like that. It just comes. You know, it's the, it, I don't know how or why, but that's the creative process. Like I have to take a time to myself, really like marinate on the beat, get a feel for it. The beat, anybody like artist wise will tell you like with certain beats, it, it almost has words to it. It has a vibe. It has a feel. So once you catch the vibe of the beat. It's talking to you already. That's it. It's talking to you already. All right. So for 2022, uh, for 2022, um, what do you, who do you plan on working with? Do you plan on working with anybody? On any new project? Do you plan on collabing with anybody? Uh, is there anybody in the city? Anybody in uh, just in the world period that you would love to collab with that your management team can make happen for you? Anybody. Anybody. <laughs> no, well, not not anybody. Wait, Larry, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Larry, let me go back. <laughs> not anybody, but I can't name anybody specifically off the top of my head, but I'm open to working with different people. Gotcha. Because different people have different sounds, different people, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm. y'all reach out to my management team. If y'all really serious about y'all music and y'all out here pushing and working, link up. Like, it, it's it's. 
networking is big networking is key i'm not one of them people that's like oh no i'm not gonna work with you oh i don't want to do a song with you no come on what's up like it's all free promo either way it go like what's up let me look you can come jump on my platform i can jump on yours and we can get together and you know what i'm saying that's what it's about ultimately at the end of the day so gotcha. now speaking of platform taking the word that you just used how do you feel that the internet has helped the music industry how do you feel the internet has evolved this thing for it to help you be in more places than you could have been back in the day. Because when we were loving music in the 90s, if you didn't go to the certain spots, the record stores, you ain't going to get it. Now you can just be at my house with a click of a button. I can listen to all the roast music. So how do you feel about that process? I love it. I love it because it puts me in so many different places. Like I, I'm right here right now, but I could be playing in somebody's kitchen in Texas and we don't even know it. Like, sure. you know what I'm saying? Like I'm here, but... I'm there too. So I'm in with the internet. It puts me in different places at different times. Like I got people in Ghana listening to my music. I got people like for real, like in different countries, Australia, like I was looking at my like Spotify for artists thing the other day. And I'm like, yo, like they listen to me in Africa. I ain't never even been to Africa. Like, you know, <laughs> what's up? Like, <laughs> What's up, my people? Y'all request me. You know, I'll come do a show. No. <laughs> but yeah, like it's big. The internet is huge, but it's something else I was talking to my, uh, my manager the, last night actually about is it's not only about the internet. Mm -hmm. Like we still got to be kind of old fashioned with it and like hit the streets too. Yeah, so for 2022, that's something else that I want to really get bigger on and incorporate into what we got going on. The internet is always going to be, well, not always going to be there, but the internet is going to do what it's going to do, True. right? Promotion wise. True. But you got to think about there's people who don't have internet. True. There's some people who don't have that kind of access. So what about those people? I want all the ears. I want all the listeners. So yeah, so like internet, yes, but I really want to start beating the streets down. Like posting my face. You're gonna be going in the store and see row flyers on the counter, like type, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's, hey, that's, that's where it's at right there. If you don't have a street team, it's kinda of hard. Even with me doing this right here with the YouTube, Grand Dossier TV, I, I call it the internet team. Yeah. I need people who can go out there and yeah. post these things everywhere, yeah, yeah. but have a street team at the same time. But uh, the next question would be, what's the best advice due to management with Jeff, whoever ever gave you with your journey in music? What's the best advice you ever had? They give me good advice every time I come around them, though, so I can't really pick and choose. Like, we have our powwows, our weekly meetings, Zoom chats, whatever, studio sessions. Like, But one thing they always, they won't let me get stagnant. Gotcha. They always making sure, like, bro, no, you got this going on. We got to do this. Bro, what's up? We just called to check on you. Where you been? We ain't heard from you in a day. Like, they stay on top of me, and that's what's important. Like, not so much, oh, you got to do it like this and got to do it like that, but they keep me motivated. They keep me going. Because if not, like, without the push, I'm going to stay still. And that's bad to say it like that, but it's the truth. Like, I need my team. Like, I need my guys because they keep me going. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Gotcha. On that. Cause sometimes I, even doing this show after I, I had COVID back in August, I ain't do anything. Mm -hmm. I just sat there. My wife would be like, "You going in today? Mm, not today. Yeah. <laughs> not, not today. Yeah. So you need sometimes. Like you need a push. Need a push. Need, need a push. Need it. So that's what that's what's going on. So if you wasn't uh, singing, oh no, what well, this question I want to know? Let the fans know who Ro is. What is something else that you're talented at besides just singing? I know how to do a lot. All right. So I could cook real good. Okay. Right. I love to cook. I also went to cosmetology school. You know, True. I went to cosmetology school. So I, y'all need y'all bundles laid, slay, <laughs> fried that to the side. Look, I could do hair. I cook. Like I, me, I like to learn different things. Like gotcha. it's, it's a lot of things about Ro that people don't know. People see me on the internet and it's like, oh, this pretty girl. And she sings and she, but I'm a licensed nurse. Mm -hmm. I'm a licensed insurance agent. I have a college degree. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm not lazy. I, cosmetology. Mm -hmm. I cook. Like, I do a lot. I do a lot. Gotcha. Recently, just started a business. Like, I it's What's more than SNR Logistics. Okay. Yeah, so it's a freight dispatch company. Y'all be on the lookout for that. That that's another. Oh, that we we don't kick that out of here. But I, I'm. I just. I just stay. I try to stay busy. I, I try to stay busy. I'm a single mom. I raised two girls. It's important that my kids see me do what I do. Gotcha. Right to me because I don't never want them to feel like they can't. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm saying. I, my kids, they know that. Don't don't tell me you can't. My girls, yeah. you no, there's no you can't. Right. You we do. That's what we do. We do it. We make it happen. You feel me? Yeah. So yeah, so that's that's big. That's important. Yeah. It's a lot about row. I'm like this whole big package just balled up in this little body. I think you on that. <laughs> now, I, like I said, I read your bio. Uh huh. They said you've been singing since you was eight years old. Yeah. Where did your first start come from? Because most black people started in one location, and uh-huh. it's called the church. No, not so for what, me. So what's your location? So I grew up in the Bronx. Like I grew up in the Bronx, New York, 169th Street and Sheridan Avenue. Tell you one more time, for One six nine and Sheridan. Shout out my people. And it was rough, like, I, and I was shy. I was a tomboy, and I had one friend. Her name was Georgiana, right? Childhood kid, kid friend. Still, she's still my friend to this day. I still speak to her. And she was so pretty, right? And here I am, this little scraggly little tomboy little thing running around. And she used to sing, and I always used to be like, man, I want to sing. I want to. I want to do that. But I was so shy. Like, I didn't want to. I didn't want nobody to hear me singing. I didn't want to sing in front of people. Like, no, uh-uh. I don't want to be the center of attention. And she was the one, like, as a kid, she was like, just sing, bro. Like, just do it. And we would sing together. And then we got in middle school, 22, and we got in chorus. And it opened me up when I got in the chorus. And I've since then, I've been in chorus my whole life. Gotcha. Like, all the way through high school. I went to a music school when I was in New York. Like, it was the Bronx High School of Music. Like, Did you graduate up there or graduate down here? I graduated from North Gaston. Oh, man. No music school there. <laughs> Wait, we had a good music program. We, oh, oh, pause. Pause. No. <laughs> we had a good music program. Miss Baker was, shout out everybody that know Miss Baker. Miss Baker was this shit. Because she's gone now. She's not definitely there. That she's, she's, I think she at Southwest now. She's okay. like, she like the hood kids. I think. Gotcha. But that's, that's a good thing, I that's think. Because yeah. y'all can sing, though. We can sing. Y'all got hit in town. We're just bad. <laughs> we, we, listen, I got 11 brothers and sisters. We was bad. It's 11 of us, okay? We're going to make a detour in this, in this interview. <laughs> you said your mama is, produced 11 kids? 11. 11. 11. That's a lot of people. That, yeah. That lived in one house? Yeah. So you Three got, bedroom apartments. So we had the girls had a room with bunk beds. The boys had their room with the bum beds, and my parents had their room. So, Jeff, if she ever run out of music, we going to fight her. Because, like, you got a lot of songs to make. Oh, I got a lot. a lot of stories in that. I got a lot of stories. You was in music. And that's one reason why I love doing music, because it's just, I have a story to tell, right? And you definitely do. I right? want the world to see me, and I want the world to hear me. Because it's a lot of people that went through a lot of the same things that I went through. You know what I'm saying? So, Yeah. Somebody asked me this the other day, and I'm asking, what is your why of why you do music? What is your why? Why do you do this? Because music is like my safe place, okay. right? And, and, and I think that's for a lot of people. So whenever I get in any kind of mood, and this has been since a kid, like when I ain't have nowhere to run, mm-hmm. I ain't had nobody to talk to, nobody to cry with, nobody to... I could always go sit down and put my radio on and pick a song. And, you know, any song, it's certain songs for different moods and vibes. You know, when you in the mood, you mad at a nigga. You go in there and might listen to something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or if you turned up, you want to go in there and listen to some happy music. Right, right. Music is my safe haven, right? I'm already, like, a big ball of crazy, right? So when I sit down and I settle down with myself, it's the music at the end of the day. Like, and I don't, like, believe it or not, like, I like the, the, the hip-hop, the rap, the trap music, but I go home and I listen to Temptations Radio on Pandora. <laughs> My Pandora does not change from Temptations Love and Happiness Radio. Don't sleep on it. <laughs> they got the best songs. I swear to God. I'm not going to That gonna is say. my type of music. I feel like that's the era that I should have been in. Like, doing music or living in. I know it's crazy yes. times back then, too, but that's like like that Motown Type. I love it. Listen, I every, love it. If you pursue entertainment at any level, what was that? The, uh, was it 60s, 70s, or 50s, 60s, 70s? Mm-hmm. That was the golden era man, of music. I swear. Like, That's the golden I wish I could have been if, oh man. 
I'd have loved to. Man. If I could have met the Barry Gordys of the world, uh, or even with the Ray Charles of the Anybody, world, or uh, Quincy Jones of the world, for me, I'd have loved it. I'd have loved it. Because that's, that's the era where... You had to go show your talent, go stand at the front door of Motown and say, hey, mm-hmm. not right. I got talent here. Like, right. To like me. you, yeah. You got to. Now it's yeah. kind of watered down with a lot of people, especially now. The internet, the internet, the only bad thing about the internet, we have watered down artists. Because you are popular on the internet. Yeah. It, it, it helps you. Marketing is a, is a, is a, is a major factor. Back in the day, mm-hmm. you had to have talent. You had talent. So, yeah. But see, and that's the thing. That's why I love that music from them because it had substance. Yes. It had feeling. It had meaning. It was okay for a nigga to put on some tight pants and go sing to a girl <laughs> if he liked her. You feel me? He was go listen right at the window. You stand through my window. I watch her. It was okay yeah. to be in yeah. love back then. Was. Love was cool then. Yes. Now the music. First of all, it's a popularity contest. All day. Right. There's a lot of people that really don't even have talent, like you said. It's just that you popular. Mm-hmm. And what's the worst thing you can actually talk about on the record to make it seem cool? Like, I'm not here to knock nobody. I really not. <laughs> oh, don't but get me started. My, but in my <laughs> mind, and my wife say otherwise, Megan Thee Stallion, in my mind, I don't really see it. She just talked about the most raunchiest thing she could say. It's catchy. It's like catchy, like boom. It's catchy. She said she gonna pop that pussy. Like, oh <laughs> Jesus, what you gonna do? Who? And, and it's kind of catchy. And I'm like, but no, nah, I really don't want my kids listening to that. Yeah, but you know. It is what it is on that, though. Yeah, yeah. I I, I like Mange. Yeah. But it's, it's about delivery. Yeah, <laughs> right? It's about song delivery. This is another conversation I had the other day with my team. Like, you can be sexy as an artist, right? And put sexy music out there, but you don't have to be raunchy. That's you know what I'm saying? You don't have to be like that. And I, again, I like Megan. I, I'll do a song with Megan Stallion. I would. I, I, hope you would. I hope you get to. I like Megan. So hear that, internet. I love you, Megan. <laughs> so fans of Megan, don't come get me, okay? But yeah, there's a certain way that you can put it out there without literally putting it out there. You feel me? So yeah. Yeah. Me and my wife have these debates all the time between Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion. Oh, I love me some Cardi. So we, we just yeah, she from the hometown. So yeah, you gotta represent what I do. I love Cardi. So. That would, that would be a dope. You, Megan, Cardi, that'd be a dope, uh, a dope song. What? That'd be dope. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be right up your alley. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes, it would. Huh. So what's, what is one way all your fans can get in contact with you? Well, not really in contact with you, per se, but, you know, follow you, see what you're talking about. Or do you be on Facebook? Are you on Instagram I am yourself? I'm everywhere. I'm on Facebook. So y'all can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. Twitter, um, YouTube. What's that other thing they be doing at uh, TikTok, TikTok, right? I recently discovered TikTok that's, and that's I'm surprise. getting kind of popular. <laughs> right? People like me. People like me. I guess I'm a pretty funny person. There you go. So yeah, TikTok, you can find me on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Got me on all Everything is Ro underscore Wilson eighty nine on all across the board. So you can find me that way. All right, so the thing I can't forget because it's a big thing now uh, with you and your team and your brand you have going on. Do is there merchandise out there people can find with you on not it? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. You know, you merch know, is the biggest thing with the internet. I know. You know, um, the other day, Jay, when we were in Atlanta last week recording, and Jay made a joke and was like, you know what, bro? Like, we're going to have to start promoting. We're going to get some cat suits. Okay. I'm thinking about it now because if you see me out like right now I'm real I'm real laid back and chill with mm-hmm. with you know I got the Jordan shirt on the, but shirt. normally I I like to get dressed mm-hmm. so yeah it's definitely gonna be some row merch coming out here very soon is that is is that's a topic on the table right now so do it man that's what everybody's looking for they yeah how can you be a part of your brand some type of way yeah that, yeah that's one thing I learned with the internet. They can't touch your brand some type of way. Mm-hmm. They get kind of weird. You know, they want to yeah. touch it, have yeah, it, yeah, send yeah. me shirts. I just I got my logo redone. I had several people come on the show. Where's the shirt? I'm like, it's coming. <laughs> I had shirt. Well, they were over here. I had shirts thrown over here, rappers bringing stuff in. I supposed to hung them up, but that's another story for another day. So, but hey, it is what it is. But before we let you go, because we're not going to keep you all day, if you had to give advice to your fans, if you had to 
give advice to the person that's coming behind you one day, this young kid that's sitting listening to Roe Wilson, what would be that advice that you give? Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't take no for an answer and be about your business, right? Because we all know music is fun. It looks cool. But the music is really not even the big part of it. The biggest part of it is the business. So anybody in the game will tell you the music industry is 90% business and 10% music. So Mm -hmm. definitely have your business in order because you could really be out here. And and this is a thing with a lot of artists now, right? You got some dope artists out here. Mm -hmm. Fire artists. Mm -hmm. Never been heard. Nobody knows who they are because they don't have their business in line. So you literally out here busting your ass making music, going to the studio, recording, 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 spending money, but you don't know how to put your business. You, you p- Copywriting is important, y'all. Yes. Being my ass cap is important, y'all. Yes. That's big stuff I want to tell people because a lot of people put music out there and it's getting stolen yeah. by the big artists. Yeah. So now you done did out here. You did, took your time and made your music. And Cardi B done found your song. <laughs> And she making millions. Be about your business and don't say, don't never take no for an answer and always be about your business. Always, always. That's the best advice I could give anybody like in, with the music. You're going to get a lot of no's. Well, before we let you go, one more mm-hmm. question. Is it hard being a woman doing this? Or, is it, or do your team make things run smooth for you? They so, make it run smooth for me, definitely. Okay. They definitely make it run smoother for me. Um, but as a female, it's a little bit harder because people don't really take you serious or they, they might look over you. You know what I'm saying? But you know, you're a big dog. You're a big dog. You know, they can't help but see you. You know what I'm saying? I ain't want to brag and toot my I'm gonna do it. Can I do it? Can I brag a little bit? So last night, I actually won my second award at the Carolina Music Video Awards. Okay. So... I'm two for two right now with the city. I brought two awards back down here to Gastonia. There you go. Um, we won last year for Best Female R&B Artist. Yesterday we won for Best R&B Video of the Year. Okay. So, Do your thing, guys. You know, you, you make them take you serious. Hey, listen, when you go to BET for the awards show, just bring Red Dossier TV with oh, you. Oh, yeah. So we can yeah, just, you yeah. know, be out there live in yeah, LA. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I believe that. I see the future coming. <laughs> yes. Hopefully this year we're going to be oh, at the it's, BET it's Awards. Oh, it's coming. We're going to be there. I already see my seat with the name card and the. I got my speech ready. I just want to bring one of the cameras just so I can say, listen, y'all saw her on the show. We out here with a name. Yes, sir. So that's what's up. Well, we ain't going to hold you long. I'm glad you came on the show. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. You know, I salute you for everything that you're doing. But for everybody on part of Grand Dossier Nation, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you hit the notification bell and let everybody know you listen to Roe Wilson on Grand Dossier TV. And we are out.